Hey, it's Hunt. You found Hunt on Saints. We're talking black and gold football. Do us a favor. Hit the like button, share your comments below, and hit that subscription button so you can get all of our content. Enjoy. Speaking of New Orleans, we'll head out to the Jim's Firearms Hotline. It's that time of year. Bring back our guy Luke Johnson, the black and gold, on the practice field in training camp, and he has been there for the duration. Luke, welcome back. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Before we get started, though, I, I mean, it's been a couple months since we talked. And yes. Uh, I, I got to know, like, how many Bud Lights were deleted when LSU won the uh, the College World Series championship? None of them in Omaha were safe. Not a single one. Of them. We made it. We made it work uh, quite nicely. Uh, it was it was the trip of a lifetime. Me and my dad went up there, and it was very very fun. Knocked down one Jello shot. Plenty of domestics, though. It was uh, it was quite good. Quite good. And I hope you enjoyed it as well at home with the uh, with the fam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my baby daughter, uh, she wasn't a huge fan of college baseball during like the super regionals and everything. But I think once uh, once we got to the College World Series, she kind of chilled out a little bit, and we were able to watch literally everything. So uh, yeah, I highly enjoyed it. That's fantastic. Yeah, uh, the same exact thing was to be said for my 34 year old wife, who was not a big fan of baseball when I was coming in, a little intoxicated uh, from regionals and super regionals about the College World Series. She was all in. She said she was crying in bed watching at the end of it. So. Basically the same thing as your baby. Uh, as your baby. Um, all right, let's talk some Saints. I've got my list here of things to talk about, but I'll just leave it open for you to start. Uh, anything caught your eye through a week specifically? Yeah, uh, you know, a number of things. I actually wrote something on this uh, yesterday. Um, yeah, I think um, there's there's four things that are really standing out to me right now. Um, it, number one, I think Dennis Allen is a lot more at ease going into his second year. Um, he's got much more of a stamp on the franchise than he did going into last year where it was pretty much, he was, he was trying to just drive Sean Payton's vehicle. You know, um, he's got his staff, he's got his quarterback. Uh, I think he learned from his mistakes last year and for his part, I think he's, he's just a little bit more chill and a little bit more comfortable in his own skin. Um, we'll see if that matters. Um, but I, I think it's, it's a positive sign in my opinion. Um, I think Chris Olave is ready to have a big year. Um, and oddly enough, I think that's because he's like not very much of a factor at practice. Um, they're not throwing him the ball a lot. And I think it's just because they, they know what they got in him. You know, they, they don't need to have him go out there and catch 20 balls of practice from Derek Carr. Um, and when you see him run routes, I mean, he looks exactly like the guy last year, except bigger and stronger. Um, and I think that's going to really aid him. Um, I, I think he's going to be the top target in their passing game this year. Really excited for him. Um, Trevor Penning, um, I, I think, is is just going to be kind of a work in progress as the season goes on. Like the the physical skills are obvious. He's huge. I, I mean, like you know a guy's huge when you walk into an NFL locker room. And you're like, oh my god, that guy's massive. You know, <laughs> it's like like he's way bigger than everybody else. And and it's just it's not just he's tall. It's like he's he's he, he looks like the mountain from Game of Thrones, right? He's he's just a giant human being, and he's a super athlete on top of that. So like those two things are going to make him probably like a plus run blocker, right? And I think he showed signs of that last year. But all that time he's missed, even though he's he's I think fully healthy, um, it's it's really not helping with his technique. Um, and I think he's going to have some some trouble against some of the premier pass rushers he's going to see this year. Uh, so it's something to keep an eye out on. Um, and then you know, out of this rookie class, I, I really really like the performances of uh, of Jake Hayner and uh, and Brian Brzee so far. Um, Brzee is just like like he's such a huge dude, but he's so explosive. Um, and I think he's a little bit behind as a run defender right now, but. He could be that rare defensive tackle that comes in and makes a contribution right away as a pass rusher. You look back at the last 10 years in the NFL, and there's been five guys who've topped five sacks as a rookie interior pass rusher. I think he could be one of those guys. Um, so I really like him. And Jake Hayner, I think, just he's he's so poised, so has such good command of the offense. And for all this talk about his arm strength and his size, that stuff has not been a problem for him. Like Ian Book was coming in here and he was checking down on every pass, right? And everybody's like, well, you know, it's probably because he doesn't have the confidence in his arm. Like Jake Hanner's coming in and just like letting like 30 yard ropes rip downfield. And he's, and he's, he's overcoming, you know, whatever these doesn't have this cannon for an arm, he overcomes it by, by doing everything in time. Um, and I think they've, they've got something there. I think he's going to be a really good pro. 
Well, that's a lot to chew on. So let me tick it off kind of one by one here. How much of Dennis Allen's comfort do you think is attributed to Derek Carr running his offense at this point instead of Jameis Winston? I mean, I think that's a big part of it. Um, but I, I also think that, you know, um, it, it's it's really important for him to have his own staff, right? I, I, you look at um, his coaching staff now, and there's not very many holdovers from Sean Payton's time here, right? And I think he knows that his voice is the most important one in the room now. Yeah, he's he was <clears throat> here on staff with guys like Ryan Nielsen and Chris Richard, who have had you know, big, strong voices of their own in that room. And, you know, they commanded a lot of respect. They, they'd either had a lot of success in the NFL or they'd been here a long time. Um, and, you know, I think he just is carrying himself like he is the head of the program. Um, and it's it's a little bit different than the way he did it last year. I think there was maybe a little bit of uh, deference um, just to, to the staff that has all been here so long. Um, and, you know, I just think that, you know, last year was was so challenging, and, and yet, uh, despite everything they they went through, they were still somehow right there at the end. I mean, they were in a bad division, sure, but um, yeah, I think they, the way they finished last year has, has him a little bit more confident going into this year, especially uh, now that he has his staff and his quarterback. The next guy you mentioned was Olave, and I kind of want to put that juxtaposed against Michael Thomas and maybe the expectation on Michael Thomas this year. I heard the quote about he's got a huge chip on his shoulder, but what are the Saints going to ask him to be this year? I think they're just going to ask him to be a, a cog in the wheel, which is really weird to say about Mike Thomas. Um, but like, look, he's he has a, a ways to go to be the Mike Thomas that we last saw in 2019. It's understandable. You know, the guy hasn't played ball in, in essentially you know, three and a half years. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that the realistic expectations for him are just to be to be a part of the passing game rather than the focal point, the the fulcrum that everything kind of goes around, right? I, I think that um, if he can just be the guy who comes in and, and gets six, seven targets a game, catches four or five of them, moves the chains, comes up with some big clutch catches, I think that's really good for the Saints because I, I think they have a lot of really good weapons around them. I, I really like Juwan Johnson's game, and I think having – Olave, Shahid, and Mike Thomas, and a heavier dose of Alvin Kamara in the passing game really opens things up for Juwan Johnson. I think Rashid Shahid is is not a flash in the pan. I think he's having a really good camp, and they're throwing him the ball a lot and letting him prove it. Um, you know, so I, and, and I think you got a better point guard back there at Derek Carr. So they, I don't think they need Mike Thomas to be AP offensive player that you're Mike Thomas, but I think they need him to be a little bit better than he's been in camp, and I think he'll get there. You mentioned Penning. Um, would you say that he's the, the favorite to be the starter at left tackle as he's going through these pains and they just throw him into the fire? Or do you think they, they play Hurst? No, I, I, would be, um, I would be really, really surprised if, if they don't start him at left tackle. Um, and honestly, I, I think Hurst has right now got the inside track to be the starting left guard. Yeah. I think Andres Pete is kind of the odd man out at this point. Um, uh, look, they just they, they know they're going to have to deal with some growing pains with, with pending, but the ceiling is so high. Right? Like they just they have to let them learn on the job a little bit here. And everything I've heard about him from the the coaching staff um, is that he is just a really 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 fast learner. And despite the fact that he didn't have like any reps last year, um, yeah, outside of the six games he played in, I think he only started one of them. Um, he's miles ahead of where he was last year, this year. Um, but he's just, he's still got, he's got a couple more steps to go. I mean, he's essentially still a rookie. Um, so the, the talent is obvious, but yeah, I mean, the last time he played a full season, he was doing it against like division two guys and he wasn't going up against, you know, the Cam Jordans of the world. So he's just got another step to make. One of the guys that I haven't heard a lot about is Isaiah Foskey, the second rounder out of Notre Dame. What have you made of him early? Um, I, he's, he's at this point, like a developmental player, I think. Um, and you know, I, I think the the thing is he was, he's such a good athlete. I mean, you saw that at the combine that he was able to win with athleticism. Um, and he just needs, he needs more sophistication at the NFL level to win. You know, he's, he's been pretty consistently gobbled up by the offensive line here and he's going up against second and third teamers. So I, I don't think that like he's a bust, right. But, um, 
but he's I, I don't think he's a guy that's going to help them early in this season. Uh, I think there's there's a good chance that he's going to be you know probably a healthy scratch. So they've, they've got some pretty good defensive linemen right now um, with. Like, like four of them, I think. You know, Cam Jordan, Carl Granderson, Peyton Turner, Tano Pass, you know, we're all having a pretty good camp. And they're all, you know, three of those guys have been productive NFL players. I think there's still hope for Turner. Um, so I think they can have a little bit of the luxury and let uh, Foskey learn a little bit. And, and he needs it because he's he's behind right now. Does that surprise you that he's that far behind? It's noticeable a weekend? Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was really high on him coming in, really high. Because he was so productive at Notre Dame, I mean, it just like across the board productive, and he fit all of the the traits they look for. And you know, say what you want about Peyton Turner and, and Marcus Davenport, but uh, I think they've been pretty good at evaluating evaluating defensive linemen generally, right? They've had really, really good defensive line play for uh, like six straight seasons. So um, I, I thought he was going to be a hit, um, and it's just it, maybe he still will be, but he's he just needs some time. He really does. Last thing I want to talk about here, Luke, and we appreciate your time. Um, it's early, but anything on the Will Lutz kicking situation? It just hasn't been very good the last couple of years, and I know that they brought in the, the rookie. Um, is there anything to look at there? Yeah, I mean, I think so, right? I think it's, I think he's in a legitimate competition for his job. Um, he wasn't good enough last year, and I, I think he would tell you that if you're getting him in an honest moment. Um, you, you know, it, this is it's just the nature of that position in the NFL. Is, is he could have like ten straight all-pro years if you have a stretch of four or five bad games. People are gonna be like, "Oh, he's lost it." You know, maybe he's got the kicking yips. I don't know. So he has to come in and prove it. I, and I think Will's had a really good camp. Um, and I think the competition's probably helped him, but I, I don't think he's he's a hundred percent surefire lock for that job. I still expect him to be the kicker, but um, the, the young guy they brought in out of Notre Dame. Um, Blake Groupie has had a pretty strong camp. He's got for you know a guy who looks like he belongs on a middle school football field. He's got a really good leg. He hit one from like 54 the other day. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, Will's got to be good, and he, he's got to be good in the preseason games. He's got to continue to be good in camp. I, I think if, if he shows any signs of struggling, I, I think it, it could be um, it could be a bad bad time for him. Good to have you back, sir. We'll talk next week. Sounds good, Hunt. Thanks, man. Hey, it's Hunt. Thanks for watching Hunt on Saints. Before you leave, help us out a little bit. Hit that like button, leave your comments in the section below, and hit that subscribe button so you get all our content right here from Hunt on Saints. We'll see you next time.